Hey, what's up guys? This is KD Cloudy and this is everything you need to know about HDR Dolby Vision recording on the new iPhone 12. And I've been wanting to make this video for a while now, ever since the iPhone 12 launched during the keynote. And I'm a simple man. I hear the words Dolby and HDR. I got to make a video about it because that's what we do on this channel. And just to preface, I've made multiple videos on AV related stuff. So you can check those out. You can subscribe if you want more of that. And also I made a full blown explainer on HDR video and Dolby Vision. So if you want more context and more clarity to understand this video, you might as well check that out. It'll be definitely helpful. And it was only fitting to make this entire video about HDR in HDR. So this entire video is short, edited and exported in HDR and uploaded in HDR. So if you want, you can watch it on an HDR display. And if you can't, that's fine. YouTube handles that for you. Anyway, back to the topic. The iPhone 12 right here supports 10-bit HDR recording. It's on by default. You can turn it off in the camera settings. And the iPhone 12, which I have here, the non-pro and the mini will support up to 30 frames per second recording in HDR, uh, regardless of the resolution. And if you want to do 60 frames per second, both in 1080p and 4K, you got to step it up to the pro models. So yeah, the one we have here only does 30 frames per second, but that's fine for the context of this video. Okay, so I'm just about to jump into a whole bunch of nerdy technical details, but before we do that, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Capes India. They were kind enough to send a few skins for me to check out for the iPhone 12, the marble and the, uh, the storm skin. Um, they look absolutely amazing and provide a very nice matte finish to the non-pro iPhones. And they also have a wide range of affordable and stylish skin options with an amazing level of customization on their site. I highly recommend you to check them out. I'll leave a link down below in the description. And yeah, Caves India is amazing. Go grab yourself one for your iPhone 12. And also, while we're at it, this, this blog portion is short in HDR. And to actually give you an idea of what you should look out for when you're watching HDR content, it might just feel like your screen just gets brightened up. What's actually, what are the basic uh, things you should look out for when you're watching HDR video. So the first thing is that all the brighter parts of your image, like this, uh, this window out there, these are going to look very bright when you're actually watching on an HDR screen, stuff like this, or something called specular highlights. Those are the things which will actually take advantage of HDR, uh, as a format. And also in terms of color, you should look out for reds and greens because those are the colors which are translated the best in HDR. And yeah, uh, those are th th that's my takeaway and my sort of like a mini review uh, from watching HDR video on the iPhone screen. I will make a dedicated video on what it's like to consume HDR content and movies and Apple TV, Netflix, all that. So stay tuned for that. But right now, that's what you need to know. Let's go back to all the technical jargon. Let's just go back into the technicalities of HDR just a little bit. Some things which I just did not cover in the last video. Now, the most interesting thing which stuck out to me when was announced that this camera has HDR Dolby Vision recording, it kind of confused me because technically you cannot record instantly in HDR. No movie production, no Hollywood studio do, does that. Uh, because they capture it in a raw or a log format and then convert it and color grade it into HDR10 or Dolby Vision. Which brings us back to those two types of HDR uh, stuff I talked about in the previous video, PQ and HLG. Just for simplicity, just understand that PQ is a more optimized format and HLG is a more versatile format. Dolby Vision HDR10 are based on PQ and that's the industry de facto, the industry standard. Everybody, you know, masters in PQ, in the PQ realm, whether it's HDR10 plus or Dolby Vision. And the thing with PQ is that you cannot capture in HDR10 or Dolby Vision because PQ is not a capture format. It's just a delivery format. And the reason why I say HLG is versatile, but it's both a capture format and also a delivery format. So yeah, theoretically, if you want to instantly capture or record in HDR without doing any color grading or post-processing, your best bet, your only bet is HLG. So yes, you might have guessed, um, and The Verge has, you know, made an article about it already. The iPhone 12 records HDR, not in PQ, 
but in HLG. But does it even matter whether you use PQ or HLG? Like I said before, why doesn't everyone use HLG or, or why doesn't Apple use PQ? The short answer is that both of them have their own place. PQ is more optimized and specialized because it works with absolute values and it has a ton of compatibility issues. And I'll get to that in a bit. Whereas HLG, because of its versatility, it's great, but it's not perfect. Because of its hybrid nature, it just cannot match the contrast and the gamma of PQ because it works with percentage based values, relative values instead of the absolute values which PQ works with. Lots of technical stuff, you don't need to know all that, you don't need to worry about all that. It's just that PQ is a more professional kind of a transfer function, very specialized and people who know what they're doing with you know high end color grading stuff should only use PQ. Now although HLG cannot be pushed as much as PQ can be in terms of like gamma and contrast, you cannot just make it like very contrasty and deep with HLG. But you know what, it's fine. Um, the iPhone is a consumer grade product and HLG is a very good first step and it's enough for consumers. In fact, HLG isn't as bad as I make it out to be. Uh, the matter of the fact is Sony is shipping the HLG uh, picture profile in all of their consumer and prosumer cameras, their FS7's huge cameras, including this camera, the Sony A6400. I am recording in HLG right now. That's how this entire video is in HDR. So yeah, the iPhone 12 records in HLG, not PQ. It's not standard Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision. What about Dolby Vision? Now Dolby Vision is a very advanced EGR format. It supports up to 16 bit of color and 10,000 nits of brightness, but its main selling point, its unique selling point is it has dynamic metadata. It means that from scene to scene, from frame to frame, the brightness and the color values and all of that stuff which is great about HDR, it varies from scene to scene. You also might know that HLG, the format in which the iPhone records, doesn't require metadata. And Dolby Vision thrives on metadata. So how do you take such conflicting pieces of technology and fuse them together? How did Apple do it? Well, let's break down how Dolby Vision actually works. Dolby Vision is based on a three-layered structure and it has different profiles. The three layer structure consists of a base layer, an enhancement layer, and an RPU, which contains all the metadata. And Dolby Vision also has multiple profiles. Profile five is used by Netflix for streaming, capped at 20 megabits per second bitrate, and is also supported by iPhones. And Blu-rays with much higher bit rates are encoded usually in profile six, seven, or nine. So uh, what happens is that when you take a movie like a blu-ray movie profile 9 all three versions the base layer is usually hdr10 with an enhancement layer for dolby vision and all that metadata encoded on top when you try to play that blu-ray on a dolby vision supported tv with a dolby vision supported player all of those three layers play automatically it's magical you don't have to do anything but if you play it on like a non dolby vision supported television or a non dolby vision supported player it just uses the fallback base layer and doesn't give you anything unnecessary or no compatibility issues. And the iPhone 12 uses a new profile called 8.4 and uses HLG as the base layer, no enhancement layer at all and puts the metadata on top. And the thing is that this is actually very clever and ingenious to maximize compatibility across Dolby Vision and non Dolby Vision compatible hardware and it's perfect. Now just to give you an idea how good of a decision it was to choose HLG recording and not PQ based Dolby Vision files for the iPhone. If you try to play a Dolby Vision file on VLC, a single layer profile 5, it's, it's gonna look terrible because Dolby Vision isn't very openly supported and when you have a fallback layer such as HLG which is royalty free and works with pretty much any display you throw at it's going to be compatible and it's going to work seamlessly now not to say that hlg is you know there aren't any issues with hlg or hdr video in general a lot of social media platforms where you share video tiktok instagram youtube does but youtube does not support dolby vision uh, but yeah all of these social media sites all of these websites they don't employ 
pipelines and processing techniques to compress uh, HDR video with minimal color loss. And when you try to tweet or put an Instagram story with HDR video on it, uh, the iPhone automatically gives you any SDR video and it does that automatically for you, which again looks pretty terrible. And yeah, we're right now in a transition phase where we are moving from this SDR video standard, which has been around since the 80s and 90s. The Rec. 709 color space has been around ever since the days of the CRT TVs. And we've been doubling pixels ever since, but the HDR video is an actual legit improvement and the next step in consumer media consumption. And I'm really excited that iPhone has been such a like a front runner when it comes to not just uh, recording but also watching HDR content, Dolby Vision content on you know the iPhone's display. And this is I'm just really happy that Apple made this and I have it. That's why I bought it. And I keep saying that HDR is the format of the future because of the, all the reasons I mentioned. And the iPhone 12 is a step towards that future. It's not a perfect one. There are going to be compatibility issues. It's not a perfect one, but it's a necessary one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.